Eighth grade. Um, I'm going to post this video of me reading the Scholastic Art Magazine that you guys normally would get in class. For those of you who need to hear it read, so that way it helps you with your questions. I'm also going to start by going through the questions. Now, below this video is these reading pages that I'm going to read to you. They're just up close and I took pictures of them and I highlighted stuff and I just wanted to try to help you out a little bit. So if you look really close, like I highlighted different things. So that way it will help you with answering these questions. When you're doing the questions, open up a Google Doc, share it with me, and make sure you number it from 1 to 26. And then you, all you have to do is just type in what you would have put in in the blank, and I will understand it. No worries. So starting with the question bank, the first question is, Wayne Tebow uses repetition in his paintings, pies, 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 on page three, which I have. And it wants you to define repetition. Well, repetition is when something, that's right, repeats. So I wanted to give you the first one to get you started. So repetition means repeating. Number two is Wayne Tebow was born blank in blank. Number three, Tebow grew up in blank. Number four, growing up, Tebow designed blank and worked as an apprentice for blank. All of this stuff is right in the reading. Number five, Tebow taught art during blank school. Number six, what does medium mean? I gave you this one. It's materials used to make art. So like crayons and paint and clay, that's your medium, what medium you work in. Number seven is Tebow is best known for his paintings of blank. Number eight, in 1970, Tebow began to create San Francisco blank that featured blank and blank. Number nine, what does Tebow say about being an artist? Number 10, what did the abstract expressionist try to do in their work? Number 11, abstract expressionist techniques are, remember abstract expressionist artist is Van Gogh. Tebow was influenced by Van Gogh. Van Gogh was influenced by Monet. There's a reason why I do these three artists together. Number 12, why did Tebow prefer to work with pies and cakes? Number 13, circle one, did Tebow work from memory or still life? You're just going to have to type in whichever one it is for number 12. Number, or I'm sorry, number 13. Number 14, how does Tebow create the texture for frosting in the painting around the cake? Number 15, using blank techniques, Tebow creates blank around objects in his paintings. What is a radial composition? When you hear radial, you should think. Circle. 17, what is meant by the focal point? So what is a focal point? You guys should be able to tell me this. Define symmetry. If something is symmetrical, it is the same on... Number 19, TiVo highlights the concept as blank being part of the American dream. Number 20, what is negative space? I kind of gave you this one because we haven't talked a lot about negative space. A lot of our artists have been like really jumbly about everything. But negative space is your background, your space that is like empty behind you. I would be a focal point. This would be my negative space all behind me. Number 21, the halo effect Tebow creates is called halation. Explain halation. If you don't understand it from the reading, I'm going to tell you now. A halation is a thin contrasting line of color around the outside of an object. Halations are used to create, like, if you have two different colors working against each other, you're creating this vibrating halo effect. So it makes your colors really, really vibrant and really pops them out. And 22, why did, Van, why did Tebow think that painting cakes and pies would signal the end of his career as an artist? 23, when did pop art begin? 24, name three other pop artists. 25, what kinds of images did pop art encompass? 
And 26 is what is meant by popular culture. I gave you this one. It's what is popular in terms of possessions. What can you own that's really popular? It's like van sneakers, Nike sneakers, um, Under Armour clothing. Okay, uh, cell phones, different cell phones. All right, so that is the questions. And now to the reading. And remember how we do these ones where it's actually mostly just like little credits and images in it? This is like the tiny little reading for this page. There's not a lot of reading on this guy. And all of his artwork is about cakes and pies that we're talking about. All right, so I'm reading the first page. Think about shopping for items such as donuts, t-shirts, or shoes. Have you ever stopped to study the way those objects are arranged on shelves and in display cases? Donuts with their colorful frosting seems to march in orderly rows. T-shirts form visually interesting patterns when stacked on shelves or arranged on a counter. And shoes set on shelves stacked above one another in a wide range of colors, designs, and textures. Visually appealing <clears throat> arrangements of food and other consumer goods are intentional. They invite shoppers to stop and buy. But American painter Wayne Thiebaud became interested in these objects for their aesthetic value. In works such as cakes, which I will post a picture of, <clears throat> and pies, 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 Thiebaud created compositions made up of repeating circles and triangles of cakes, plates, and diagonal rows of pie slices. Repeating is repetition. These items are arranged as they might be seen in a bakery or cafeteria. Thiebaud was born in Mesa, Arizona in 1920 and grew up in Southern California. Although he did not begin working as a painter until he was nearly 30, all of his experiences contributed to development of his painting style. As a boy, Thiebaud enjoyed drawing cartoons. In high school, he designed sets for school plays and worked as an apprentice in the Walt Disney Animation Studio. Thiebaud eventually became a commercial artist. In the late 1940s, he began to consider painting as a career. To obtain art training, he enrolled in several colleges in California. While in graduate school, Thiebaud taught art and began experimenting with various media and painting styles. Um, media is what you use to create art, media or medium. They're, used, they're called the same thing. And graduate school is, okay, so you go to high school and you get a diploma and then you go to college for two years and you get an associate's degree. You go to college for four years, you get a bachelor's degree. And after your bachelor's degree, you can go to graduate school. So that's where you get your doctrine or your master's degree. All of your teachers in New York State are required to have a master's degree. So this is important to know. We all went to school after college, even longer. All right. So number six we answered, and now we're on to number seven. While Thiebaud is best known for his paintings of cakes and pies, he eventually moved on to other subjects. His stiff frontal figures, such as Girl with Ice Cream Cone, which is in the picture that I posted for you guys. It's this girl right here. And this is his Pies, Pies, Pies picture. So Girl with Ice Cream Cone. Recall 1960s advertising art and... In the 1970s, Thiebaud began creating San Francisco cityscapes. This is number eight. That featured dramatic shifts in perspective and multiple points of view. In, in wide down street, we see some buildings from the side, others from a bird's eye view. A portion of the highway juts up like a raised drawbridge. Thiebaud in his 80s paints every day. He prefers being called a painter rather than an artist. This is number nine. This is his quote. Being an artist is very rare, he explains. There aren't many people who achieve it. I think we ought to keep it as a special word. That was number nine. Now I'm moving on to another page. That's this one. Poet of Pastry. During the 1950s, Wayne Thiebaud went to New York City to see the work of a group of artists, the Abstract Expressionists. Abstract Expressionists is Van Gogh. Abstract Expressionists whose paintings dominated American art at the time. This is number 10. 
These artists sought to convey emotions. Remember, Starry Night is all about feelings. So they're conveying emotions through non-representational shapes and colors. Thibault's early paintings incorporated abstract expressionist techniques, which are, number 11, fast, thick brushstrokes, and vivid colors. Thibault preferred to work with recognizable objects, remembering the way in which baked goods are displayed in diners and bakeries. Thibault felt that pies and cakes with their geometric shapes, that's number 12, geometric shapes, were ideal subjects for his compositional experiments. He did not use pastries for these still lifes. Number 13, working from memory. He called up the dessert-laden picnic tables of his childhood in restaurants where he had worked as a young man. In Around the Cake, top left, Thibault has used thick brush strokes to suggest the swirling textures of cake, cake frosting. So 14, how did he create those cake frosting? He used thick brush strokes. And I don't have a good picture. It's kind of like really, really dark. But I will put a picture up for you guys this week, okay? Number 15, borrowing from cartooning techniques, he creates heavy outlines around objects. The cakes and pies are set in precise arrangements against a black open space. Each slice around the cake is turned so it appears to revolve around the central cake. The focal point, remember we talked about this focal point of this radial composition. It's a circle. The pastel drawing chocolate cake and slice is made up entirely of three simple geometric shapes. Circles, a triangle, and a square. In cakes, rows of cakes have been placed on pedestals balancing on thin stems. The long shadows cast by Thibault's cakes suggest late afternoon sunlight. These perfect-looking pastries are found in dreams or memories rather than bakeries or supermarkets. 18. The formal symmetry, the same on both sides, of this work and most of the others shown here heighten the concept of food, number 19, as part of the American dream. So Thibaut is saying that all Americans just love food and we just dream about it and we're all about food. Not always, but sometimes. All right, I'm on to this page. Thibaut found compositional possibilities in deli counters, pinball machines, and gumball dispensers. In Delecacine counter below, the counter forms a rectangular grid in this asymmetrical composition. Asymmetrical is not the same as symmetrical. Asymmetrical means it's not the same on both sides. The artist balances the positive shapes of the hanging sausages on the left with the large area of negative space on the right. Negative space is your background space, remember. In three machines, Thibaut has placed three gumball dispensers in a blank space outlining them with lines of contrasting color. This technique intensifies the color, creating a vibrating halo effect. That's what a halation is. The points of view in these paintings are those of consumer viewing merchandise. In Around the Cake and Chocolate Cake and Slice, the point of view is from slightly above. So instead of looking at an eye view, they're saying that you're looking at it kind of downward a little bit. The legacy encounter is seen as if approaching the counter straight on. Three machines are seen at eye level. 22, Thibaut thought at first that his cake and pie art might signal the end of his art career as a serious painter. He didn't think people would take him seriously. But when these works were first shown in New York City in 1962, the exhibition sold out. Thibaut's food paintings coincided with a movement known as pop art, 23, in the early 1960s, pop artists such as, 24, Andy Warhol, Clay Oldenburg, and Roy Lichtenstein uh, rebelled against abstract expressionism by creating images, 25, of oversized soup cans, comic strips, and food items. These works were intended to satirize the excesses of American popular culture. 
Remember, popular culture is things that you can buy, you can own. Because this is when mass production is coming out. So everybody can have the same shoes and the same shirt and the same cool baseball cap. Okay, so this is a big deal. Although Tebow's works share some characteristics of pop art, they were not intended as satire, as satire or negative commentary. So he's positively saying good things about American culture. They were not intended... Oh, I'm sorry. His works are not only studies in composition, but also celebrations of American bounty. So that's the reading. The images are below of the pages that I read. Things are highlighted to make it easier for you guys, because I know this is really hard doing it over like online. And remember, Google Doc, number it straight down, put your answers that would go in the blanks in next to your numbers and share it with me so I can get your grade in for this week. Have a good week, guys.